Good day, everyone, and welcome to St. Anthony Catholic Church. Today is the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of the following. Audrey May, Naomi, Carol Buss, Maddie Ives, and Thomas Lansdowne, and for blessings for the United States of America. Let us take a moment to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and to ask him to help us to hear what he wants to say to us today. In today's first reading, announces the return of the Israelites from the Babylonian exile. It proclaims the end of a time of suffering and the beginning of a new era of peace for Jerusalem and her inhab inhabitants. Isaiah uses the image of motherhood to characterize the relationship that will exist between Jerusalem and her people. The reading foreshadows the blessings that will result from the coming of the kingdom of God with Jesus. In the second reading, Paul shares with us how he bears the marks of Christ on his body. For Paul, circumcision means nothing. What matters is the cross of Christ and the new life it makes available to him. For Paul to boast of the cross of Christ is amazing when we realize how crucifixion is regarded in his time. It is a de degrading death reserved for slaves, violent criminals, and political rebels. Who would want to boast of this kind of death? Paul refers to how his commitment to Christ has led him to share in the sufferings of Christ. The marks of Jesus on his body is a reference to the many beatings he received. In today's gospel, Jesus commissions 72 disciples in pairs to share the good news to all who are ready to listen. 72 represented all the nations of the world. Before they depart, Jesus warns them that they will, will not be received warmly. He also tells them to travel lightly and to trust him. If people open their hearts to you, accept their offer of hospitality. If they close their hearts to you, do not waste time arguing with them. Move on to the next town. The master is in charge. The reading ends with the return of the 72 and their stories of success. Let us pray. Lord God, you feed us with signs of new life every day. Give us eyes to see you present in our midst. Give us arms to carry you into our world. Give us mouths that drink fully of the milk of your comfort so that we might make your kingdom visible now. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in our opening song, Gather the People, number 302, verse 1 and 3. <laughs> Yes. 
Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. We're called always to respond to the word of God. God call us to share the good news. Let us pause for a moment, reflect the times in our lives where we, we have been hesitant, unwilling to share God's good news, God's love and God's mercy to one another. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you help the lost find their way home. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ Jesus, by your cross, you redeem the world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to spread peace to every household. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. her child. So I will comfort you. In Jerusalem you shall find your comfort. When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bodies flourish like the grass. The Lord's power shall be known to his servants. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God.
practice their faith, freedom to vote, freedom, a lot of different freedoms, freedom of speech. All those are important part of our life to make us as a human being to be able to practice and to exercise, to be a human being. 
And today, Jesus Christ sent out his disciples, 72, to, to preach the good news, to, to give people an opportunity to, to accept him into their, their life. Now, the thing that kind of puzzled me at the reading today, that kind of struck to me, was Jesus said, the harvest is abundant, but the labors are few. Go and ask the, the, the master to send out workers. Now, I get the labors are few. That's understandable to me. It's understandable since 1970. The number of priests in the United States from 1970 to 2020 has been reduced by 60%. So I'm not sure I can retire anytime soon. <laughs> so that's, uh, that, that's clear to me. I can see, I can read that, that on the wall. I mean, what it says about labors are few. But... Help me out here. It said the harvest is abundant. What does that mean when the harvest is abundant? God's love is always there with us. Yes, but it said the harvest is abundant. The labors are few. Who, which, what is he referring to as a harvest? Yeah, those who long to hear, they're right, they're ready. Well, I don't know about the, for the picking, but you know, maybe. Yeah. You know, they're ready to be harvested. They're ready. They're welcome. They're ready for the Lord. I question, I mean, I think, think about that for me. It struck me as a little bit unusual to say. Any idea why, Sue? You look like you're, you're, uh, you're yeah. scrunching. Yeah. <laughs> That's just my look. Um, no. That's your natural look. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, yeah, I was thinking about harvesting you know, fruits and vegetables and things. You, know, you might have a huge crop, but if you don't have enough people to pick them, They'll be spoiled. They'll, they'll go to waste. Okay, I got that. But I'm just saying the harvest is abundant. Because I, 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 that kind of puzzled me a bit. You know why? Because I think, you know, if you offer people an option, if the harvest is really ready, $50, go to church. What do you think people, most people would pick? $50. $50. So, okay. You give people a choice. Half an hour free, or you can play at casino, or half an hour with the Lord. What would people pick? Me and the Lord. Okay, for you and the Lord, but I mean other many other people. Probably the casino. The casino. Or you tell people, well, go go watch a movie, the, the top run movie right now, whatever it may be. Or go to church. What would most people say? Mm -hmm. Go to the movie. So help me out to understand here. If the harvest is so great, that doesn't quite sound like the harvest is ready. I, I question that, you know? Yeah. Then the help me out here. The well, plenty. I think it means that there's a lot of people that need to be saved. Okay. Yes. They want to be saved, but how come they're not packing the church in? Or Nobody's right. talking to them. Nobody's spreading the word of God. No. It's out there. Okay, Sue? Well, it's instant gratification in the movie. You might have to wait to see the results. You know, okay. Well, well, yes. <laughs> okay. One more person. The problem is that sometimes the reason we choose the money or the movie first is that we know God is always there for us. Okay. So we your can argument. Off and he's there. Okay. Taking God for granted. Okay. A number of years ago, you made a call in the early days of the internet. Joe, Steve, Steve, Joe introduced the iPhone. You remember the clunky one, the early version of the iPhone? Mm -hmm. The first time I saw it, I was like amazed, like, oh my God, you can actually make things bigger. I was just, you know, just looked at it like, oh my gosh, they could do that, you know? I wasn't quite 40 yet, but I was looking at the screen. Uh, maybe I was thinking, I'm not sure I'm 40, but anyway, just to see that the screen getting bigger, I was like, oh my gosh. And people were shocked at this new iPhone. And he explained iPhone means internet phone, just in case for you guys don't know. It connected to the internet. And the phone, people were out, were, were kind of shocked to see this phone. Who would buy a thing, a phone that doesn't have buttons? I mean, how do you call? You know, the basic thing of a phone always has guaranteed buttons. But this thing is just flat screen. And it's touch sensitive, but it doesn't have buttons. And you know, people were shocked and floored. And of course, now it's a standard for phones, pretty much. 
you know, for, it took a long time, you know, for the, even for the phone industry to, and you can remember the Blackberries and all these other phones, they start transitioning to a large screen. They still got buttons because they, people felt comfortable with buttons. They gotta have buttons. Well, now it's a standard thing, like I said. And Steve Schoep says, when he introduced his phone, he says, people don't know what they want. You gotta tell them what they want. I mean, talking about a person who's pretty confident at that time, introducing a new product, a revolutionary product, now it's just a norm. And what I'm trying to introduce to you is, God is much more, Jesus is much more powerful than the iPhone, but yet people I don't recognize, that I, I'm not sure they realize that they need God in their own, in their life. You know, I guarantee you right now, people who have phones, if you take away their phone, what do you think is gonna happen? Yeah, they'll freak out. They think, thank God. What's that? I'll be out of my electronic leash. Thank you. Okay, you're the minority, but other people would be a little bit frazzled and anxious. Like, what am I missing out on? What if the world collapsed tomorrow? What if there's something else that I don't know I'm missing out on? What is my friends doing? But I mean, the point about this, it's just a, a part of people's life now. Majority people have phone within 10 feet of them. You know, majority people have close... Is that right, Ice? Yeah, even the TV is an iPhone. Yes, that means that people <laughs> oftentimes will have a part with their, with them. It's, it's a, a part of their life. They get some people get jittery about it. And I have people who said, "Well, I don't go anywhere unless there's internet access." Yeah, I know someone that if the phone goes to twenty percent, will go crazy. Yes, <laughs> they'll get the shakes. <laughs> yes, the nervousness. I okay. can't. Okay, anyway. Panic attack. Right. And so there's a whole social condition for that. But my point about all this is that God is giving us something even greater. It's Jesus Christ. And I said, you know, and I submit to you that oftentimes we don't recognize about our need for him. And so we end up choosing something else, which is oftentimes that doesn't satisfy our life. You know, now that the phone has been introduced, people can't imagine what would what was the day before the, the iPhone came out. Well, 15 years ago to this day, you may recall a picture you saw, the most, one of the most famous pictures in the world, the napalm girl. There was a naked girl running around in the village, and you can, you can see her running with fear and terror in her face. You know, she was, her village was napalm. Her clothes burned off the, her, face, her body, and she just ran with terror. And she said, you know, after the picture was taken, her life turned upside down, not only up, but the napalm the fire, the flame. It turned her life upside down. She was so filled with shame and, and guilt all her life and felt so ugly all her life. And recently now, 15 years later, she finally got the final, the tough surgery, you know, to fix, the, you know, to deal with the, the skin graft and the burn. For those who have ever been burned before, even the little, you know, thing. It's a very painful experience, isn't it? It reached the core of your being. You're like, oh, to the, you know, imagine all that throughout your body being burned that badly. Even a little scathing, boiling water it hurts. But for this woman, she felt, you know, once she got that bur badly burned, she, her life turned upside down. No one wanted anything to do with her. I mean, I, you, could, you know, why is that? I would imagine because a lot of people don't know what to say to the person anymore. I mean, just to be around her. It's a sense of discomfort. You know, so like, what can you say? I'm sorry? Okay, and then what? Yeah, and not only that, she was Vietnamese, right? Yes. And uh, the Vietnamese believe that uh, if your body was maimed or, or uh, mutilated, that you would not advance to the next life. I'm not sure about that one. I'm Vietnamese myself. But I do, but I do know once you're burned that badly, you know, good luck trying to find a husband or anything else in your life, you know, right. association with that. And I know when a person is that badly scarred, people just don't feel comfortable being around her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it wasn't until 1982, she, believe it or not, like you, uh, Stella, on Christmas Eve, she discovered Christ. Finally, she, you know, her life turned upside down and finally, on the day of Christ was born, she, 
understood the suffering of Christ. Because throughout her life, you know, she was trying to find meaning in this suffering. You can imagine, find meaning. Why did this happen to me? What is the meaning of all this? I got to live, but I find no meaning in life. Until she understood like, oh, finally, this is why Christ came into the world. It never occurred to her. I mean, never really made, made sense until she, until the Chris Eve 1982, that she discovered Christ and Christ came to her life, that she was lifted from the person she was today. And, and soon and later on afterward, to this day, she formed a foundation for, for, for children's survivor of wars. A, a, a spokesperson for peace for the, for the suffering that she went through and you know after 50 years she could finally say this bird for her was a blessing and for many of us we went like doesn't sound like a blessing to me but why was it a blessing for her it yeah it brought her to Christ it, it, you know throughout her life she went out this bird she don't think she, she doesn't think she can ever discover Christ would have discovered Christ. And it's through this horrific experience that brought her new, I mean, that brought her to Christ and gave her a mission in her life. And we too in our life, even the most traumatic when we, in our life, I suspect that all of us have sometimes been burned before. Sometimes physically, like this woman, not quite that bad, but burned in some way. And what happens when you get burned? You get scarred. Yes, you get scarred. And what else? You withdraw. Why do you withdraw? Because you don't. You don't always want people to know what's going on. That's right. And, and not only that, but you don't want to be burned again, don't you? There's an old saying, once burned, twice shy. That you're, you're so scared now of this flame. Every time you see a flame, you... you, you you are extra cautious. As a result, you have drawn within yourself and, and you're focused solely on this pain and suffering in your life. But you know the thing I found really wonderful, I mean, the thing that helped me in life when you get burned? Because it could be a transformative experience. You know, skin, ultimately, when you get burned, scabs will form over, but guess what? Sometimes, eventually, new skin will form from that. And that new skin for me is Jesus Christ. If you allow him to work in your life and allow him to transform you. And for this woman, it certainly did for her. And it could also does the same in, for us in our life. And it's very easy for us to focus solely on our trauma in our life. You look at all the, the suffering of the world that people have gone through. And in your own life, a person could spend the rest of their life and just focus on that suffering. You think about Sandy Hook. Every time I see those pictures of those beautiful children, four and five year old, it breaks my heart. I can only imagine what their parents go through. And I guarantee you now, 10 years later, I bet you those parents, they're still hurting badly. Yeah, and they will be for the rest of their life. Because when you kill those children, guess what? You also kill the parents. But you know, they, in a, with their suffering and pain, Jesus Christ is there. And when we, in our life, as the saints remind us, Padre Pio, accept the cross that happens to us in our life. I mean, for me, it's a lot easier to accept natural suffering in our life, cancer, illness, but it's a lot harder for me when it's done by another human being. You know, by the, by the humanity of another person. That's for me, it's, it's you know, that's a, an act of the will, whatever it is, it's another person. But you know, through the humanity, through the greatness and the good of, a, of, a, of a, another human being, of Jesus Christ. He, he redeems the suffering and the sin of the world. And that's the good news that we should be able to embrace and hopefully recognize in our own life. And oftentimes, you know, in our life, I wonder, do we acknowledge that? that the great gift of faith that Jesus has given us in our life. 
Because when we truly acknowledge and, and see that gift for what it is, then it really should transform us. They should give us the confidence to say, yeah, this is what God has done for me. He's calling me likewise to do so, to bring forth this great news to you too. And he's calling us likewise in our life. If you really believe what, you, what, what, what God has done for you, you likewise, like the saints, are impelled to, to share that good news. It means living an authentic life. And as I said to you the time, many times before, how you live your life is, is for me, is a witness of faith. Like this woman, her life, everything that she's gone through and how you, what you face in your life is a witness of God's love and mercy for me. And you witness for one another. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you to rejoice and to acknowledge what 4th of July means. We all have a, a given a freedom. Do we choose God or not? God give us a choice, doesn't he? And I just invite you, my brothers and sisters, to choose God, to choose Jesus as he has chosen you, his beloved, that in doing so, may you and I, through our choice, experience the fullness and the joy of Christ, that in doing so, may our suffering and our pain in our life be, be transformative to make us more like him, that we too in our life can use what we've gone through for the glory and the joy and the mercy of God for one another. Amen. 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 Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consensual with the Father, through him all things were made, for us sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the Lord the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and came again. For our sake he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and then rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and has seated the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see him on the land of men. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come before God empty-handed, confident that our concerns will be heard. That believers everywhere find comfort and nourishment in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That those called to leadership in government and civil service find renewed help in the works of justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we celebrate Independence Day this week, we remember our dependence on God and neighbor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who share in this Eucharist feast nourish one another in faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died may see the face of God in heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own personal and special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of peace, you send us into the world with the message of your Son. Hear and grant the prayers we offer. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit be called heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. and far by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Take taste and see that the, that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who seeks refuge in him. Our communion song is number 332, Taste and See. Amen. Wife. 
And the beautiful thing about every night is that their daughter, who's 70 years old, pushes his, her, her dad, who's almost 100, to his mom. They give her a kiss. Yep, good night. <laughs> That's, so every night their uh, daughter who's collecting social security takes push them together so they can say good night to each other. One thing I, I help me out to understand here after mass, you have me ideas about this because I'm I'm puzzled by this. They said in all their 79 years of art together, they never argue. I was shocked, never been married myself, but like, how does one not argue 79 years together? So if you could, if you know it, I've got an idea about that answer. They call them discussions, not arguments. Yes. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe they, maybe they, they yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's, that's, no, I'm, I'm puzzled, that's all. Either that or they're the boldest liars in the world. <laughs> or, no, oh, come on. Or the other possible scenarios I'm thinking, maybe they just forgot they're 100 years old. So yes, understandable. I'm, yeah, so anyway, I'm just kind of curious about it. It would kind of shock me. Really, never argue? Anyway, also, so keep that in mind, each anniversary is a wonderful thing. So I just invite you to, if you have an upcoming wedding anniversary, let us know so we can rejoice together. And we know that you guys got some catching up to do with this couple. So you better stay firm and, and see if you can meet their record, 79 years and counting. Also, remember, birthday's coming up. We want to wish everyone a birthday in the month that you are celebrating. If you have an upcoming birthday, you know what to do. Send us a picture of your birthday, of you when you were younger, and a recent picture, and appoint it, and uh, reveal something that most people do not know about you. So keep that in mind. And also, we're always called to give witness and testimony. That's an important part of life, and this week, remember, this upcoming week, we, our guest columnist is Sue Lick. So she shared a wonderful article about how God had touched her in her life. And you know, the more and more I think about revitalizing my life is that life is not a spectator sport. It's an active part. I know in my life, you know, when you play an instrument like I do, the piano or, or Stella with the guitar, you know, you can listen to music. It's not the same. You gotta play it, you know, to, to feel part of it, to feel part of the music uplifts you. And I think life is that way. You just can't watch it from a distance, but a part of it. Sometimes it's painful, sometimes it's joyful, sometimes it's just monotonous and dreary, like my typical piano practice. Sometimes very dreary, but you gotta do it to get the good results. So I just invite you to keep that in mind in your life and, and, and be a source of encouragement for one another. And that's where your testimony, it comes in, guest columnist. So I just invite you to keep that in mind. Don't get loose focus. Share your story with one another. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, they may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wicked and snares of the devil. May God reveal him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking for the root of souls. Amen. Our closing song is number 747. This is my song.